So personalized career site, Phenom has helped us to get to a personalized career site that every time a candidate comes in, if they've been there with us before, it recognizes them and it serves them up jobs. We want that. We want to engage them to try to get them into the applicant process. Um, it has a we, have a, we have landing pages now, which we had, but none of them were integrated. So we're able to actually really engage with our candidate pool, specifically graduate nursing. We're in healthcare, so we really, really, really want the new grads. Um, and this allowed us to, to highlight and showcase um, new grad career laddering, et cetera. Hosted apply. I don't know if I gave you the other number, so I'll tell you that in just a little bit. <laughs> so quick apply to me is like the most important part is having that hosted apply experience because it allows you um, to capture the, the information, that name, email, phone number, and now your recruiters can see it on the rack inside Phenom. Remember that big bucket? Of, of candidates, our recruiters couldn't see it. Now they can see it when they get, give name, email, phone number. That is, is just critical to our team. Um, and then the AI chatbot, I have to admit I'm the Xer. Like I don't, I don't, I don't talk to the chatbots, but I do recognize that we have some, we glean some stuff from it. Um, in addition to that, the recruiter experience, our recruiters had no access to data, so we wanted them to be able to see and touch and, and engage their candidates. Um, so through the talent CRM, they're now actually to look at it from a requisition perspective. From the marketing campaigns, we can actually have drip and email and text marketing, which allows us um, to engage faster. The AI insights from the chatbot that I clicked X on, and then SMS one-to-one -one text. OTA managers struggle um, to be able to really manage their teams because they don't have access to data. Um, the insights and analytics inside Phenom are helping us to reevaluate and manage um, our recruiters so that they can really do what we want them to do best, which is create relationships, engage candidates faster and more quickly. So, I think this is you. How did we do it, Ted? Let's talk about it. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to talk about, now that Terry talked about all the fun stuff, I'm going to talk about how we actually, <laughs> I'm going to talk about how we actually accomplished this. So, so really, the, the, they can, so all this stuff, um, it, it looks great, but somehow it needs to get done, right? Like it doesn't just magically happen. Um, and one of the things, one of the challenges we had with, um, with this particular project was um, SSM Health came to us and challenged us to get this done in 60 days. So we came back and said, well, we can't do it all in 60 days, but we can at least get you the basic bare essentials that you need to get started um, on your journey. Um, and we can get you a new career site that'll give you that kind of engagement that you're looking for. Um, so that was our commitment, um, and that's what we set out to do. Uh, so it, it all starts with, you know, with any project, it, it always starts and ends with a great partner. We had a great partnership with SSM Health, we still do, as a matter of fact. Um, many of the team are sitting here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and still do, I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> We're not moving on just yet. Um, so we still have a great partnership. Um, Terry brought a terrific team to the plate and everybody's been, you know, we had, we had the clearly defined roles right up front. Everybody knew what they were supposed to be, be doing um, and, and everyone was committed to getting all the deliverables we needed to getting things done on time. So I think, you know, first and foremost, that's where it starts. Um, we also were able to take advantage though of some other enhancements that Phenom's made to the platform. So um, Chad over here will be speaking a little later if we have some time to kind of show you a little more detail on what some of those are. Um, but these are essentially like product enhancements that were made uh, that allow us to basically um, improve the speed at which we can configure uh, our, the tools on the back end. So rather than having um, you know, developers who have to write code, we now have these kind of out-of-the-box interfaces they can use, which does makes it a lot faster to do the implementations, and also reduces the amount of manual errors that happen, so it improves our quality as well. Um, and then finally, um, one of the other cool things, that, you know, the timing of this worked out really well, because um, last summer we kicked off a new organization, One Global Delivery, which um, I'm a part of, um, and we have, one of the great things about that is that we're able to embrace and change very quickly and innovate thanks to the processes that we put in place. Um, so when we see a process that may or may not be better than the existing process, it really gave us the opportunity to be able to jump in and, you know, to, and kind of implement something a little different than what we might have done in the past. Um, so what we did was we actually took our traditional delivery model, which was kind of like um, typically what we would go and we do what we call a waterfall model, which is really where you go. We gather all the requirements up front, um, we come in, we do a lot of analysis, we make sure we 
dotted all the uh, I's, crossed all the T's, uh, and then we give it to our development team who does the work, we go through a validation phase, and then we deliver. So that's like our standard process. We kind of threw that out the window for this project, and we said, you know what, we're gonna do a much more agile approach. Uh, we're gonna take an agile approach to this development. So what we did was we set up, um, you can see we set up a plan. Um, we had a clear goal each week. So we, we started out in week zero where we provisioned everything up front. So SSM Health, and as we kind of take other customers through the same plan, because it is a scalable model that we're working on, it's not just a one-off. Um, what we do is we will we'll provision all, across all products up front. So now, um, as a customer who's maybe with the email, you're able to go in, you can see the products, you can kind of like touch them and, and see it, play with them, see what exactly like what your, your data is going to look like in those products and see how that's going to look to a potential candidate who's coming into the career site or to a recruiter who's going to be using your CRM to help um, to source candidates. Um, so that was week zero. But then each subsequent week, we would set up a specific goal for each for those weeks, um, and we made sure it was understood uh, what the clear deliverables were for each week. Um, and then, what, instead of doing all that upfront uh, design and, and analysis work, we would do it like on a week by week basis. So we would come in, we'd have certain tasks we do. As soon as we completed those, they would go back to our development team. They would configure. They would do the configurations we needed to do using the tools that uh, the Chad's team built. And basically, what we and every week, um, SSM Health, Terry and her team would have a way to be able to go back and take a look at what those changes were. We could evaluate them. So we were doing everything kind of like in a, like I said, in a much more agile model. So we're doing it sprint, sprint by sprint or week by week rather than you know all at once uh, and it, it really helped to speed things up and it helped to get us over the finish line much more quickly, quickly than we would have with our traditional model um the other thing we did was we actually we set up two separate tracks so in order to make sure we have the right audiences for each call uh, we set up a technical track and a functional track so this is something where Basically, the technical track would be focused on some of the integrations that we do. Um, that was more around, or any kind of infrastructure that needed to be set up. Those were all, you know, so, so everyone who was a part of that technical track knew, um, everybody who was a technical person knew they had to attend the technical track meetings. Um, the functional track was much more geared towards, um, I see, I saw Brianna here somewhere. There she, there she is. Brianna was our, our point person for doing the uh, CMS integrations, for setting up tracks, for building out the content on the site. Um, so she and, and the rest of the team worked really hard to get that set up as part of the functional track. So, um, so we all worked with them. But that way we were able to kind of divide the work and sort of help divide and conquer it. Also, by doing these like meeting both in parallel, it also helped us speed up uh, and get that a little bit more quickly than, it, than we would have normally. All right. Um, with, with any uh, phenom uh, product that you get, there's always integrations that come in. So obviously, like our products by themselves are great, but really, what makes them really powerful is that they can talk to your ATS. And I know most of your, I think from the show of the hands before, most of your Workday customers. So in this case too, it was really important that we be able to talk to Workday with these integrations. So what we did was we took a two-phase approach. So for this first iteration, where we had to get the site up and running very quickly, um, we looked at which integrations would give us the most value uh, or would give Terry and her team the most value. Um, so this is part of our, our new process, our new Falcon model. What we do is we like to get the job sync integration running first because that's where we can get the jobs from your ATS into the platform. We can see what they look like. Um, that allows us to, you know, basically everything runs off the jobs, right? So we get the jobs in and we're able to kind of set the rest of the site up after that. And you can see exactly what that job content is going to look like both on the career site um, and in the CRM. And the other important integration that we focus on in that first kind of iteration would be our one-way hiring status, which is really um, how we get candidate information from Workday back into PNAP again. So those are the two uh, main integrations that we focused on. Um, those are the ones we felt like give you the most bang for your buck um, as we kind of work through them. Can I stop in for one second? Sure. Yeah. Um, if you notice, when we set up our training, we did candidate experience, we did recruiter experience and manager. We didn't have the employee um, portion or that integration. But we did this on purpose because we knew that from a learning perspective, if we if we broke it into the same chunks in which they were implementing it, it would allow us that same speed um, to market, if you will. Great. <coughs> um, and then once we completed that first uh, 60 days, or that first, it was actually less than 60 days, but it was, uh, it 
was a five week cycle for the most part. Um, once we completed that cycle, we actually started in with the phase two integrations. So other things that would, that would add more value to the process. So that would be things like two-way hiring status, so which would give recruiters the ability to set statuses and send those back to Workday directly from the CRM. And also our hosted apply, which um, Terry talked about a little bit earlier, um, it reduces some of the friction. That's like the Workday quick apply that you mentioned earlier. It definitely reduces some of the friction, uh, or a lot of the friction from a customer, or a candidate, sorry, being able to apply uh, to a job, it also allows for more analytics tracking. We can gather more information around those candidates. Uh, it's, it's overall like a, it's a much more seamless experience for candidates. Yeah, and, and just, uh, you can test it. If you do, please use the word test so we know you're a fake candidate. But if you didn't, go to our website. We'd love to know that. Um, but, but I think one thing that's important, like from a results perspective, we've been live for a week, week, right? Um, maybe we're two weeks now. Are we two weeks? Okay, got it. <laughs> so I actually on Sunday I pulled the stats. So a week prior to hosted apply and the week after, and the difference was like 400% on leads, and 292% on job leads. And the difference is talent community versus people who actually looked at the job and clicked up the apply click button. And that just goes to show you how quickly people are looking for jobs and expecting to see results. So just, it's a great number. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. All right, so uh, just to kind of recap what we just talked about. So these are some of the keys to success that we had. Um, you know, again, I'm not gonna, I don't have to read through all these, but essentially it's like, you know, the biggest thing I think is really just, you know, making sure we were aligned. That, to be honest, that's, honestly, that's the most important thing with any project is, just making sure that we get off on the right foot, that everybody's aligned, everyone's clear on what they need to do. Um, and then obviously just being able to provide, both on both sides, just being able to hit our deliverables and providing what we need um, when we need it. Um, we do that, we also, like I said, we did an iterative model, which I think you know, really helped to kind of like speed things up because you're not, you're not, you, you, like you're doing everything while it's still fresh in your mind. I mean, John uh, is actually the lead on the project, he can attest to that. You know, we were able to kind of go back and review things and change them on the fly, as opposed to kind of like waiting for weeks and coming like, back. Terry, why did you do that? We just said yeah. we were going to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, so basically, so we do that, we, as, we're, as we're doing that, we're working on a plan, and then we get everything certified and prepared for launch. <clears throat> and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Chad, who's going to talk us through some of the technical innovations that allow us to do this. first part of this is we went through all of our existing integrations and some of our implementations over the past couple of years and we said, okay, what's causing the biggest friction points along the way? What is causing our clients not only to be able to rapidly deploy some of their experiences, but also what are we continually running into as far as bugs or any of these tickets that you guys are submitting to us? Uh, so we did, we did read through all of them and we did make adjustments based on that. So, uh, first part of it is our flow. We created what's called Flow Studio integrations, and this is your, um, how you're going to be able to connect your APIs from your Workday, your, your third-party uh, uh, applicant tracking platforms, and then being able to bring that data or that data integration back and forth uh, between the ATS and the CRM. So what we did is we we created a UI, so then that way we're no longer relying on developers, but rather we can rely on our non-technical teams to be able to set these. Uh, templates up to be able to go at a much quicker pace. So step one, create the UI, which we did for this. Step two of it, then we started looking at the APIs, okay? We now know that a lot of people are running and they don't want certain data points to come in, or maybe they do and they want to add different parameters to that. So we added another layer of uh, configurability within those APIs and then being able to rapidly turn those on. So we can start getting data flowing at a much uh, quicker rate. Next step was, okay, we know that we're running into a lot of timeouts along the way, whether it's a password change or we're running into different issues for data timeout because it's such a large payload. So what we did is we built our API config so then that way we could quickly set up new APIs, whether it's going to be through a bulk API or we're going to do single transactions, we can set up new ones on the fly without, once again, having to rely on developer resources. So we built this new interface so we can set up our API config 
And then within that, we had our field selector and transformations, as well as the ability to set different timeout periods. So that way we know sometimes on a Saturday, you have 10,000 applicants that are coming through. We want to expand that a little bit further to be able to make sure that we can handle that load. So that way all data gets passed downstream to the ATS. Next, we built one of my favorites, Flow Studio Forms. This is under the hosted apply. This is now how applicants are engaging and applying to your, to your career site. So what we started doing is we know that a lot of times there's gonna be different changes, whether we want the boxes or the branding to look differently, we wanna add a different field as new laws are coming out. So we didn't wanna to have to once again rely on developer resources. So what we decided to do is to build an Uber template that houses all the different fields that have that preset integration between the ATS and the CRM. So that way we could quickly turn on or off fields, and then we could also easily capture information and send it downstream to both, both systems. And lastly, what we have is our application performance monitoring, so APM. So what that is, it allows us to start monitoring and setting certain thresholds for any kind of failures. So now at any given point, we can quickly go into our APM tool, we can see how the job seek is running. Was there any failures? Or did we, was it a success, but we missed one or two jobs? If so, we can click into that failure or that missed job to see what was the reason for that job timing out for not coming through. So now we know what the problem is. And then number two, we can set threshold alerts to start alerting you as well. So that way, instead of you coming to us and say, hey, look, my, in my ATS, I have 10,000 jobs that are supposed to be shown. And on the career site, I see 9,958 what's going on with these two jobs, we can start proactively getting our team to say, why did this fail? Why did this not come through? And what, what, what can we do to improve this at a much rapid pace, or a much quicker pace? Can I just say too, like on the, on the inset of that, like as a customer, they provided us with a workbook, and that sounds very generic, but it actually really did lead us right through each of the steps, and we knew ahead of time you know, oh, hey, we can go ahead and give them this, this, and this, because we know what those things are, and we don't have to wait till the next technical call to ask some of those questions and be kind of ahead of the game. John may not agree with me, but <laughs> I felt like because of that, it felt it didn't feel as hard to get some of that data. Um, I, I'd be just curious, John, do you agree with that or no? Yeah, I mean, there's always questions. Like, so, yeah. To get it in. So the workbook was really, really helpful for us. So that was all great stuff. Um, so what was the outcome? The outcome is December 23rd. We have a new career site powered by the Phenom, fully optimized by Google, launched in six weeks. We improved applicant volume by 10 to 15 percent. We have 5,000 plus chat qualified leads, 3,000 plus leads from career site personalization, and 10 times more CRM contacts than recruiters can create. So a very positive experience. Um, obviously, we had a very good partner, and you know, obviously, we did have some growing pains as I heard. Um, but we really worked those out and we met our goals. And we hope we can do that with some of our other clients or anything you guys are interested in. So that is our presentation. Are there any questions? You got to speak loud. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I can do that. <laughs> uh, I'm actually in implementation now. Is this is this Flow Studio tool something that's available to end customers, or is it only available to the Phenom? So currently right now we have a couple different personas or people that are, have access to this. So we have our internal uh, teams that are doing the implementation. And then if you're going through an SI partner or an external partner, they also have access to this. Okay. Our end goal is to be able to present this to everyone. So that way, if you want to make things on the fly or you can't sleep at 3 in the morning, mm -hmm. you can quickly go in and, and do actual little extra work. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Other questions? So I know that you guys are talking about this from like a new implementation perspective or an existing customer. I know you said the goal is to get it to existing customers, but is there any thought about like doing that with someone? Like are you looking for a partner? Is that <laughs> Yeah, so we have, um, I can take this one. So we, we have, we're doing implementations all the time for existing customers as well as new customers. 
part of our process is we're actually like, so, so we're, you know, we don't want to boil the ocean, right? So we're starting, we have a specific set of deliverables that we're using as our first kind of phase of this Falcon model that we can use to, you know, and we, do, we actually have it down now, but we've actually, the newer, so if you're a new customer starting out, we now actually have, now have it down to like a four week plan. So we're, we're constantly doing that, but we're also looking at other products. So we're, we're working on optimizing our scheduling product, for example. So if you were to, I'm not sure if you have that product right now, but that would be a product that would be potentially eligible for this kind of like faster delivery model um, as well. And we have another team that's working on our employee experience and looking at uh, how to optimize that one too. So it's just, it's actually more like we didn't really, without going into too much detail, we have like, there's a whole methodology we're using to basically take the lessons learned from, you know, um, you know the implementations we've done with, with folks like Terry and her team, um, and actually take that, take those lessons learned and feed them back through like kind of a, like a cycle where we then kind of figure out where can we make more tweaks to optimize the process, and then we have another uh, team that's looking at kind of how do we, what do we need to do to, to socialize those out and make those part of our regular development cycle. So I think it's going to benefit. It may, it may not be immediately, but, but you'll start to see benefits of that as we continue. So any new products you buy, you know, will be optimized in this way as well. You had asked for a 60 day, uh, 60 days for your goal. What would be a It wasn't my goal. <laughs> it's what it had to happen. <laughs> Believe me. What is your suggested no. What? Yeah, so so we do have the like I was saying we do have a four week um, we can do it in four weeks so that would be if it, as long as <laughs> no four, four weeks yeah four, four weeks is the <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is and the, you know the one thing I, I I was mentioning to Chad earlier Ted's heard me say five hundred times is that you have to be ready to catch what they're going to give you right so when we think about um, that 60 days, that 60 days is because our current contract was going to run out and we were going to go down. And we had no clue until like literally the week before 30 day notice. So it was a really emergent type situation. Um, but, but then once we realized that, we had to put a team together very, very quickly who could do that work. Because it, it's, it's not just two hours here, two hours there. It is two or three weeks of people working 40 hours a week to get that done. So as long as you as the organization are prepared to catch that, then you're good. But if you're not, you know, Phenom doesn't have those resources to do them for you. They don't know your organization. So it's going to be a little more labor intensive if you don't have those people on the other side ready to catch it. Four weeks is easy. Yeah, yeah, but we can do four, we can do four <laughs> weeks span. Yeah. We can we can move I guess my answer would be we can move as fast as you said. There you go. I think that's great. Yeah. There's a question over here. Yes, on the workday side, are you using four connectors or do you have to make custom or you already have something? Sure. So we our our IX is all custom integration. So that's how we implement directly or integrate directly into the ATS. So that way we can extract directly. Uh, so that way we're not having as many timeouts or having to go through third party systems that might lose data along the way. And I would add on to that too, like when you look at the technical teams as well, I mean they already have, they already have resources dedicated to certain activities, so that's kind of what I mean by you have to have those team members ready to catch, because they have to be ready to, to get all the information to you being on in order to go to make that happen. So it really is, it has had to be a partnership in order for us to get you know, to get to where we are today. And so, the whole like, is there any Oh, uh, yes. yeah. Between the two, yes. Yeah, there is some, so we have a, we have a whole, um, we have a methodology. So, like Chad said, we have standard integrations that we do, so there is some, there is some work involved. It's very, it's very well documented. We provide the work team, your work team, team with uh, a set of here's what we need to make this work, here's what you need to give us access to, here's some reports, some custom reports we're going to need for some to enable certain pieces of functionality and things like that. Um, but our system is designed to consume all that. We have a standard integration. We have standard integrations that we have. Yeah, it's also built off of what they call the data. Oh, okay. So that's all documented. And that's like eighty five percent of the small thing you're Or we're over by 25. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? 
Yeah, so Brianna Langford is in the back. She's our TA marketing uh, program manager, and she would be happy to chat with you. Um, it was very difficult. We have more than 60 uh, pages on our site, and so every one of those either had to be branded, we had to figure out what to do with the links. Um, that's really what I mean by having those dedicated resources to be able to help do that. Um, but if you're in a position where you can choose five or six pages and, and really focus on that, then it makes it a little a little more easy. Um, but Brianna, Brianna is like the rock star in our CMS, and I would just shout there.